Uh, right now, I would like to uh, ask uh, Tomasz Motyl and uh, Tomasz Niedzielski uh, to share their own story uh, about uh, the utilization of uh, and recent implementation of uh, AI in uh, UAV operation of uh, Polish uh, High Mountains uh, Search and Rescue Group, uh, GOP group, which is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so uh, the floor is yours and I will uh, start presenting in a moment. Hello everyone. Thank you for your uh, introduction and wait uh, for presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll start with a short movie about my organization. Um, the Eura Group is the youngest of the multi volunteer search and rescue uh, seven regional groups. We have been operating in the Krakow Częstochowa Abland for over uh, 20 years. The region is uh, popular with enthusiasts of assorted activities, hiking, cycling, rock climbing uh, and caving. And this is why our group's rescuers uh, participate in a broad array of uh, medical training courses, including rope techniques and uh, search mission. We attach uh, great importance to improving and expanding skill and equipment resources. And the mountain volunteer search and rescue your group's operational territory covers the Krakow Częstochowa Abland, also known uh, as a Polish uh, Jurassic Highland or Jura. The overall range uh, spanning uh, territories uh, from Krakow to Vialun is 160 long and occupies an area of approximately uh, square kilometers across uh, three voivodeships. Silesia, Małopolska, and Wood. The GURB Jura Group uh, has a team of 130 uh, rescuers. Uh, in 2020, our rescuers logged 20,000 hours of pro bono work as part of the organization. Also on day off and uh, public holidays. It takes a minimum of three years to train a mountain rescue specialist in the Eura group. Over that period, the rescue service candidate has a display skills, endurance and uh, considerable involvement. Main goals of GORP uh, operation include providing assistance to persons whose life and health have been endangered. In 2020, uh, Eurogroup rescuers spent 800 hours on search and rescue intervention, mission and expedition. Main operational areas include climbing accidents, search uh, for missing persons and uh, caving accidents. We have begun cooperating with the University of Wrocław. I'm uh, working on uh, his implementation based doctoral thesis at the Institute 
And the focus of related doctoral works involves uh, efforts to implement SAR UAV, allowing automatic detection of human beings in low seating during evasion photographs. The thesis uh, includes a field work involving SAR UAV system used in actual operational works and field experiments indeed to outline guidelines concerning practical system application. Chłopaki mają poszukiwania 12-letniej dziewczyny. The rescue team will apply several search methods. The rescuers will carry out terrestrial and aerial observations of terrain using a new system for unsupervised detection of lost persons. Piesek działa w tym rejonie. A co z tym sektorem? Ten sektor sprawdzony zostanie przez kłada, łącznie z tymi drogami. Tutaj zadziała dron, bo są tereny otwarte na południu od miejsca zaginięcia, a my przeszukujemy ten teren. Over 150 aerial images will be taken in 10 minutes. Pomarańczową podkoszulkę. Tak, miała długie spodnie. Miała jakąś tapkę? Daszki. Visual analysis of aerial imagery would require a few hours of observer's work. The SAR UAV system will automatically indicate potential places where a lost person is located. Due to advanced algorithms, it will be done within a few minutes. Sztab zgłoś się dla zespołu drugiego. Zgłoś się sztab dla zespołu drugiego. System najprawdopodobniej zidentyfikował poszukiwaną dziewczynę. Mogę ci podać koordynaty, jeśli będziesz gotowy. Zespół numer jeden, zespół numer jeden. Zgłoś się dla sztabu. Zgłoś się zespół numer jeden do sztabu. Osoba poszukiwana została zlokalizowana. Proszę o powrót do sztabu. Now, the rescuers have to reach the detected person. Odnaleźliśmy poszukiwaną. Dziękuję, zrozumiałem. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, could you confirm uh, you can hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you well. So thank you very much. So the second part of the presentation will be held by myself. By myself. My name is Tomasz Niedzielski. I'm a leader uh, or the principal investigator of the SAR UAV project. And I was asked to uh, talk a little bit about how the story uh, developed from the early beginnings in 2015. Um, we carried out the project at the University of Wrocław um, on uh, using drones and um, search and rescue algorithms for detecting people on aerial imagery. And that project carried out in 2015, 2017 was uh, the fundamental science project. So the output was papers, were papers. Uh, but um, uh, we, it ended up with a very uh, promising result, which was the early prototype of the SAR UAV system. So at that time, we were able to um, detect uh, people. Um, so we decided to do something um, more advanced and go into the research and development project um, and we set up the uh, SAR UAV Limited which is the spin-off company which works under the uh, patronage of the University of Wrocław. Uh, this is a venture capital investment associated with it and uh, what we did we uh, took the early prototype and produced a project which um, is now on the market and uh, available for search and rescue organizations around the world. Um, apart from reaching the technological readiness level of nine, uh, we still are doing science and the list of papers uh, here uh, proves it, I think. Uh, the next slide, please. Thank you. And this is uh, just uh, where we um, were at 2017, 2018 stage. Uh, so we published a paper in Journal of Field Robotics on how the SAR UAV system worked at that time. And uh, of course, at that time, we used statistical methods, not artificial intelligence ones, but we still were able to detect persons. You see here the, one, of the one of the figures from the paper. And the 
person lying here in the forest uh, in the winter conditions and uh, this person was detected. This paper presents uh, the exercise we carried out in 2017. Uh, so this is our beginning and uh, on the next slide, if you could just move to the next slide, I'll be indebted. Thank you. Uh, I'll talk uh, about uh, where we are now. So the SAR UAV now, it's a novel IT system or the software which uh, supports search and rescue activities with drones. And the most important thing which we have uh, on board uh, SAR UAV is the human uh, detector. So we are able to detect human on land and on water. And this is the biggest strength of the software. But on the top of it, we are carrying out the modeling of person mobility. So we are able to um, model where a person can walk into given the land cover and given given topography and elevation of terrain. Of course, we have some uh, sector editing tool, which is a standard thing in uh, search and rescue exercises and uh, uh, operational work. Uh, at the beginning, 2017, we were sending imagery to the uh, cluster, to the some kind of big computational infrastructure, but the rescuers said, no, it doesn't make uh, any sense because very often in the field, we are not able to uh, have any access to the internet. So we decided to uh, work offline without any access to the internet on a fast laptop, which is a gaming laptop with the appropriate uh, uh, GPU. And it works fast on the laptop without any connection to the internet, which means that 100 images are processed within two and three minutes. And what's very um, challenging, and I'm very proud of, is the fact that SAR UAV software is on the market. So we started at the university and we managed to uh, produce something which is uh, available on the market. And it saved a human life. I'll be talking about it in a minute. So the next slide, please. And what we do in SAR UAV, uh, we can do two things. If you uh, go towards right, so the right arrow, go to the mobility model, which is able to um, delineate the special extent of a person walk. Um, so we can estimate when a person uh, can walk into. And this is important for any searches, or planning any searches uh, using various methods, not only drones. But for our exercises and our operational uses, uh, we use the mobility model to plan a UAV mission. And uh, of course, you can skip mobility model and go to the photogrammetric flight, which we recommend, and uh, acquire nadir images or near nadir images. Um, and this information, so this imagery, is, in, is an input to person detection algorithm, which within two and uh, three minutes gives you the automatic detection of uh, persons. The next slide, please. Thank you. And now we are in the market. So this is uh, our website uh, translated into a few um, languages. And uh, you can acquire this software and use it in the field on, uh, on your laptop. And what is very important, uh, we managed to implement this software in uh, quite a few search and rescue organizations in Poland and abroad, in, in Italy, um, Germany, uh, now Spain, so Romania. So we are quite happy to uh, have it uh, as widespread as possible. The next slide, please. And this is probably the most important slide, this one and the next one. Uh, it's on 29th, as far as I remember, of, uh, of June 2021, uh, the system uh, detected a missing person and the story was really uh, a proper proof of concept and proper proof of the evidence of, uh, of this um, system working. And uh, our partners from GOP, so the rescue service in the Estrade Mountains uh, acquired the system and after 27 hours of searches uh, it was the person was detected at the beginning the person was sought using different methods but uh, the last hours last 
four or five hours were with the SAR UAV system, and the SAR UAV system was the tool that detected a person in the field. Next slide, please. And this is the, the best proof. You see the uh, trajectory of a UAV. So this is, these cameras present uh, the centers of projections. So where uh, the images were captured within the concept of a photogrammetric flight given the uh, side and front overlap. And on the last, last uh, row, you see the pin. And this pin corresponds to this um, an area which is a zoomed in fragment of imagery where the person was detected and uh, the coordinates read from um, our software was taken by rescuers and within uh, 10 minutes or so uh, the person was reached and saved so this uh, proves that the SAR UAV software saves lives so the next slide please and the next slide finishes the presentation and uh, thank you for for the attention and uh, I would like to take this opportunity and thank you very much for uh, inviting me and giving me the chance to talk about the SAR UAV system and the cooperation with uh, Mountain Rescue uh, of Europe. Thank you. And we also really thank you for uh, the acceptance of our invitation because the presentation was uh, brilliant and the topic is very important I believe. And uh, I hope that um, that uh, among us are some uh, first responders that that may be interested in uh, in utilizing such uh, successful uh, successful uh, tool uh, in their day to day job. Uh, as we are a bit uh, um, uh, as we are a bit um, uh, before the uh, time schedule, uh, I would like to use this. Uh, and I see that there is also one uh, question. Uh, so maybe let's uh, use this this uh, seven minutes that we still have uh, to answer it. Um, I see a question from uh, Caligru uh, Vasilios uh, who asked is this if this solution is uh, utilizing Agnos uh, uh, or Galileo for positioning? I can answer this question now. Uh, no, the, the detection is based on uh, neural networks, the detection itself. But given the pen detectants and the, and the, um, the, the object, uh, we calculate the coordinates based on uh, GPS and uh, heights of drones. Of course, there are different height systems used by different drone manufacturers. So the detection itself, so the coordinates are the function of the detection using the artificial intelligence based on imagery and the geometry and the combination of GPS and uh, altitude systems uh, developed by different drone manufacturers. We have a set of um, height systems which we uh, process and we are able to, to, to use. Very important, very important information is that uh, we uh, develop the system to be open for different drones. So it's not the drone itself, which is very expensive. You can buy a drone which is dedicated for the SAR UAV. No, we make SAR UAV to be dedicated to different drones. That's why we work using different altitude or height uh, systems uh, to, to process and to calculate uh, the position of a missing person. So I think this answers the question. Thank you very much for this answer. Um, so I would like to follow up with another question. Uh, this one is from myself. Uh, can you sh give us some example of, of the, the, the settings that you mentioned? So the, the, the drone settings, um, just to understand uh, about what uh, elevation altitudes of, of, the, of, the, of the UAV are we speaking about, uh, how many pictures should be taken and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, instead of talking about the altitude, I'll be more uh, happy to talk about the ground sampling distance. So I, I think it's probably um, the, the, the best uh, beginning of my answer. So we recommend uh, something between one to about 2.5 uh, centimeters per pixels with recommended or recommended 1.5. Of course, we started with five centimeters per six per pixels, but over years, 
it's becoming smaller and smaller uh, because of cameras being better and better, having better resolutions. So now we decided to recommend something uh, which is better. So GSD smaller because of uh, the um, detection itself is the first issue and uh, uh, analytical work is the second issue because as you as you seen in my present my presentation there is a small zoom in image of a detected object if it's a small uh, big gsd so so weak gsd so it means it it, it won't be so good in uh, analytical work when a person who is analyzing imagery and sees the detection results the person say oh i'm not sure Having small GSD, something like 1, 1 1.5, 2, it's very easy for, the, for an analyst to make a decision whether the system detected properly or uh, it's a false positive hit. So this is an analytical uh, job uh, for, for, for an analyst to, to do it. Tomek Model is doing this job in the field very often and, and, and struggling to decide. So the uh, lower you fly, for example, for 20 megapixels uh, camera, you can fly uh, 50, 55, 60 meters uh, above ground level, and it, it produces something like um, 1.5 um, centimeters per pixel, which is a recommended ground sampling distance to, to get the best performance of the software. We use uh, CyWAV in real activities. Uh, it's working on developing and recommendation on how to use the system uh, to make it uh, most effective. How to fly, where to fly, and uh, what speed. Okay, thank you for this answer. Uh, so maybe, uh, uh, because you started to, to, to speak about this, so maybe maybe let's follow up with this with uh, last quick question. Um, you mentioned uh, the, the zoom in uh, just to um, enable uh, operator to check if this uh, if this um, detection is valid or, 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 or false positive. Um, how many false, false positives uh, do you get uh, per each mission? Just 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 to, to let us know mm -hmm. what number are we talking about? It's a very good question and it's very difficult to answer because it's site specific and it depends on terrain. And very often, uh, if you fly in the urban area, you get uh, a considerable number of false positives. But if you fly over the open terrain, we have definitely a recommendation to fly over open terrain. This is dedicated to open terrain. The number of positive, false positive decreases uh, significantly. So for open terrain, you can have um, something like um, I would say 30 hits. For example, yeah, uh, I, my answer will be uh, will be that way. Uh, the paper on the successful uh, detection, uh, you have over 100 had over 100 images and 30 hits, and one of the 30 hits was the uh, three of uh, 30 hits were successful because we have photogrammetric flight, so every image, uh, every site is photographed uh, a few times from different perspective of the camera so a few hits can be simply because of uh, mm, the same site uh, photographed from different locations so not so many so it, it's definitely doable to go quickly mm, through detections by an analyst um, yeah, something yeah. like one or two minutes I, I would say, basing on my limited experience, that it seems very bearable to be able to, to go through 30, uh, 30 examples and check them. So uh, it, seems, uh, it seems that it's very effective. Um, and uh, the, the last question, the real last question, sorry for that. But um, what overlap value are you using for your photogrammetric lights? We are using a standard, something like uh, 60 side and 80 front. So this okay. is total 80%, 60 side. And this is not to carry out any mosaicing and any photogrammetry. So please do not uh, think of the SARI UAV system as a software which produces uh, through structure from motion the auto mosaics. No, not at all. We do not uh, combine, uh, do not produce a single map or to photo map. We only 
photograph every single place from different locations to get rid of a problem of a person being hidden, for example, by a tree from one uh, direction of the camera, position of the camera. Uh, the person very often is visible from a different position on camera, and that's why we want to have every place photographed from a multiple positions of the camera. But detection is carried out on single images. Okay. Yeah, but but uh, wouldn't it mean that that uh, such a data that is collected for for your software can be also used uh, to to generate in different software the, the photogrammetry image? Of course. Of so course. so we, we recommend standard, standard photogrammetric flight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Thank you for answering all that questions. I hope that uh, even more will come uh, in the in the panel session that will follow.